What is up everyone and welcome to some more F1 23 My Team Career Mode and we're here for round number 19 of season 6 of our Jaguar Racing Career Mode and I am very much looking forward to this one because this is the first opportunity that we're going to have to mathematically wrap up the championship. It is, uh, you know, the fifth final race of the season. Uh, we've got Mexico, Brazil, Portugal, Vegas and Abu Dhabi coming up. And to wrap things up in Mexico, I would be emulating Lewis Hamilton in 2017, I believe it was, when he, of course, won the championship in Mexico and uh, did that famous run uh, all the way through the, uh, the the crowd and everything. It was very, very uh, exciting. You know, he's carrying the British flag on his back and everything. It was uh, a really memorable moment in Formula One, I, I remember. Um, so, yeah, we currently sit very far atop the standings. We're almost certainly well, destined to be world champion at this point unless we have an absolute we'll stinker the for the the, uh, the remainder of the, the season now. But uh, either way, uh, this presents our first opportunity to do it, and hopefully we can do it in style. I'd like to get a win here. We've never had a win in Mexico before in many seasons of driving here. I think it was off the calendar in either season two or season three, but that means that uh, in four opportunities... Uh, we've we've not even uh, had a podium here, I don't think. Or maybe we had a P3 on one occasion, but yeah, we've not uh, we've not had a win. So that's going to be my uh, my goal for the weekend. But uh, of course, there's a long way to go before that. Last time out, we were at the uh, the Texas GP, and despite my best efforts to win, we uh, got ourselves into P2 with a few laps to go. But I just couldn't close the gap to Dennis Hauger uh, as he picked up his third win of the season. It was good enough to move him into P3 in the Drivers' Championship, and I'm sure that he'll still be targeting P2. I think mathematically he's still just about in the hunt as well, but it's going to take a uh, pretty legendary Leclerc. performance from him and a pretty and big bottle from Paris. myself to, uh, to have any chance of over. overturning me. Goodbye. Piastri as well. He needs to uh, have a good performance today. Uh, if he outscores me, then the championship rolls over to uh, to the next race in Brazil, where I'll have another opportunity to, to wrap it up. But Piastri needs to outscore me. If I, if I even tie him on points in the event that I get, let's say, a ninth place finish and he finishes 10th with fastest lap or something like that, uh, I will still mathematically win the championship. The only way in which Piastri can stay in the championship is by... Uh, outscoring me in some capacity doesn't matter how doesn't matter which way but uh, that's the only way and I think Dennis Hauger as well uh, needs to outscore me quite dramatically to stay in the, uh, in the championship fight as well um, something like he needs to win basically and for me to not score points or something something to that degree he needs to outscore me by 20 20 something points I think so yeah it's very unlikely that it's gonna happen for Dennis Hauger uh, but here we are in qualifying our first flying lap it was actually a pretty good time. It was a, uh, a 1.15.4, I believe. Uh, and then we we had a pretty poor second lap on a, another set of uh, fresh soft compound tyres. Um, so we, we didn't end up improving there. But the 1.15.4 initially was still good enough to put us P2. As, uh, well, very disappointing here. Charles Leclerc out in P21. What is he doing? Uh, I, I can't comprehend this. Um, Charles Leclerc, just completely and utterly unacceptable. At this stage of the season, when he was at one point looking like he was going to be a comfortable P2, maybe even P1 in the Drivers' Championship, to join De Vries, Duin, Sergeant, Porsche, Stroll, all of these names who regularly get knocked out in Q1, and uh, Leclerc, someone who's won a race this season to be involved in that mix, is uh, just completely unacceptable, quite frankly. And uh, he's going to have to hope that he has a really good race now because because uh, I am ever, ever more likely to uh, to stop him from racing here next season if uh, things continue the way they do. Our banker lap here in Q2 was a 116.0. That was only good enough for P15, actually. So we are going to need to find some serious improvement. And as we make our way into the final sector, you saw there, I was only actually about one hundredth of a second up on Perez so we're going to need a, uh, a big improvement through the uh, the final sector here. I didn't really find it however so we're going to have to hope this is enough it's a 115.4. Is that good enough to see us through to Q3? Yes but only P8 so uh, yeah going to be a, a bit of an uphill battle you would have to imagine for me to grab pole position and be fighting for the win here. Fitter Paldi look at that. 
Unbelievable stuff. Another another fastest time in Q2. This guy is really good at qualifying. Uh, he makes it through along with Sonoda up there in P2 as well, actually. Great performance from the both of them. Knocked out here. Albon, Magnussen, Perez, the hometown hero. Vesti, Lawson, and Joe. No massive surprises there, I would say. Um, but the biggest surprise by far is definitely Fittipaldi going fastest. You would not have expected that. I, uh, I'm kind of amazed by that, to be perfectly honest with you. So, uh, yeah, props to the Brazilian driver. Hopefully he can deliver a strong performance again next weekend in the, uh, in, in the Brazilian Grand Prix as well. For now, though, let's turn our attentions to Q3. We start out on a fresh set of soft compound tyres, and we actually do a really solid banker lap, 115.5. Uh, that would almost be good enough to count as my, you know, actual lap that I, you know, I've been doing 115.4s so far on fresh compound tyres, so, yeah, not really, uh, not really surprised uh, if that ends up being my, my fastest lap, but we do manage to find a little bit of improvement uh, as we make our way onto our lap on the fresh soft compound tyres. We're improving by probably around two tenths by the looks of things. As we round this final corner, uh, we'll see exactly what the time is. It's going to be a little under two tenths by the looks of things. We cross the line to 115.3, and that is good enough to put us in P2. So not quite pole position, but we will be starting on the front row, and that presents us a great opportunity to challenge for the win tomorrow. We're all ready for tomorrow's race, but before we begin, let's have a quick look at those who will be fronting the grid. Russell, Robinson, and Max Verstappen. Goodbye for now then, but we are really just getting started. Make sure you join us again for Lights Out tomorrow. Less than one tenth away from pole position. Very tight between the uh, the top five drivers there, less than two tenths. Uh, so really, I think it could be anyone's game tomorrow. We'll have to wait and see how the strategy unfolds, how the pace unfolds in the race. And uh, yeah, I'm optimistic about our chances of maybe getting a first victory in Mexico. Either way, we will see what we can do as we get into the Mexico City Grand Prix. In the 60s, Mexico City would be the season-ending race. That's no longer the case, but it is always a party in these parts. Welcome to the Mexico City Grand Prix. 2,285 meters above sea level, the altitude will test the driver's fitness and their engine's efficiency. 17 corners, seven to the left, 10 to the right, that make up a 2.6 mile circuit equipped with two DRS zones. It's time to take a look at our starting grid for today's race. George Russell will begin today's event in pole position, and Robinson completes the front row. Looking at the rest of today's grid, we have Verstappen, Oscar Piastri, Norris, Ocon, Fittipaldi, Gasly, Hauger, Sonoda, Albon, Magnussen, Perez, Vesti, Liam Lawson, Joe, De Vries, Dewan, Sergeant, Leclerc, Stroll, and Teo Porcher. Now, it's almost time for lights out, so let's go down to the track. Anthony Davidson is here once again for today's Grand Prix. Why don't we get things rolling by talking about George Russell? And it's great to have the company of Anthony Davidson up here in the commentary box, and a great win for them last time out. What goes into a winning run like that? There are never any guarantees in this business, but certainly the performance last time out would have boosted their confidence coming into this one. Okay, here we go. I know what you can do. Don't let me down. All right, so starting from P2 here in Mexico City, and we are going to be starting out on these medium compound tires by the looks of things. As usual, adjusting the strategy a little bit, the undercut meta proving to be the way to go, even as I've adjusted my setups a little bit to uh, okay, allow so me to be a little bit kinder to my tires, so reducing those tire pressures, tires reducing the likelihood that I'm going to overheat and wear out the tires to the, uh, the point that they are going to be uh, going to be no good after about five or ten laps, which is what I have done in uh, in years gone by in in many of the uh, many of the circuits on the calendar. Mexico City actually one of those tracks that's really hard to overheat your tires in because of this massive long straight. But you can heat them up a fair amount through that tight middle sector. People think that this is a a low downforce circuit because of this big long straight, but in reality, uh, it's kind of a medium downforce circuit. But we will see what we can do as the lights come on. 
and the lights go out as we switch to the replay camera. And we've had a pretty good getaway. I think we're going to be putting the moves on George Russell a little bit here. Yeah, we're basically wheel to wheel at the moment. But George Russell, through that second phase, he's obviously running a little bit less downforce than I am, which means that he's breaking away. And now we're coming under pressure from Oscar Piastri. Absolutely critical move for Oscar Piastri here right now if he can get around the outside of me. Because this, ultimately, is to keep him in the championship fight. The man who's yet to win a race this season in 18 races, in multiple opportunities to do so. So Oscar Piastri, this could be his best opportunity yet. And it is such an important one for him as well as we move back on board with myself to the TV camera. We uh, have managed to keep Oscar Piastri behind. And theoretically speaking, this next part of the track, this next sector should be my bread and butter on account of the fact that this is by far the most tight and technical one. You know, I'm running a little bit higher downforce than the rest of the cars on the grid. I can't remember exactly what it is. I think it's about 32, 28 wings or something like that. So yeah, a real opportunity to, uh, to, to break away from Piastri, but not taken, unfortunately. In, if anything, Russell has actually broken away from me out of that DRS range. It's going to be very hard to get back into Russell's DRS range now. And, um, well, we may, uh, we may have to say goodbye to uh, the, the chance of winning this already. That said, though, we have closed him down, but obviously no DRS just yet because we're still operating under last year's rules where the DRS gets enabled after two laps. Obviously now in, uh, in real Formula 1, it gets enabled after just one lap. So, uh, yeah, that will be a difference that should be reflected in the new game, which is upcoming. But we get attacked by Piastri into lap two. And, uh, well, I was a bit worried that uh, we were going to get overtaken by him. And, in fact, you can see that he is actually ahead of me now as we make our way into lap three. So, assumedly, I, uh, I must have missed the overtake there. But hopefully we can get back at him uh, nice and quickly as, uh, as things go on here. But we are now coming under pressure from Esteban Ocon as well who uh, is piling a bit of uh, piling a bit of pressure on but unfortunately uh, we managed to have uh, avoided being overtaken by him so uh, yeah this is Max Verstappen in the Ferrari see through turn one he's had a bit of a spin and um, that's holding up the traffic quite a lot wouldn't be surprised if maybe that brings out a VSC or maybe even a full course safety car depending on the severity of it and uh, wow it's actually a red flag I, I didn't think that that was necessary on account of the fact that he, he was clearly getting going again but evidently the, the stewards felt like it was too much of a hazard to uh, to continue. So hopefully we can uh, we can get back ahead of uh, Oscar Piastri once the uh, once the race restarts now. Um, because at the moment, obviously, he is uh, you know working pretty pretty well to, uh, to to keep himself in the championship fight. Going to be adjusting the strategy ever so slightly so I can stay on the uh, medium tires for a little bit less time and switch over to the hards. Hopefully, go for a bit of an undercut on people who may be taking the mediums a little bit longer. And uh, yeah, we'll get back into the race now. Most people are actually starting on soft here by the looks of things, but we'll see what we can do as the lights come on. And the lights go out and Oscar Piastri got bogged down there quite significantly. He's going to fall down the order, plummet down the order as uh, Ocon has had a really good start there and he's made his way up into P2. So we're going to stay P3 off the uh, the restart here. We get back ahead of Oscar Piastri for the time being. Dennis Hauger, meanwhile, on my outside, he's going to look for a move onto uh, the podium if he can. He uh, is having a really strong time of things at the moment you know finishing on the podium consistently getting a few wins here and there wouldn't it be exciting if Dennis Halga could get another win here today as he tries to make a move around the outside of me you're gonna have to try harder than that I'm afraid just because you're my former teammate doesn't mean I'm giving you any uh, any free passes to get through or anything like that you know he's gonna have to uh, gonna have to make it work the old-fashioned way as uh, you can see Logan Sargent retired from the session there I actually missed that um, so I don't have a, a replay of that because I didn't realize that uh, it had happened okay, so but um, yeah Sargent becomes the first seconds. retirement of the race he wasn't running in the points so no real harm there but his teammate in the other Aston Martin Dennis Hauger now making a move into P3 knocking me off of the podium positions for the first time in this race and uh, yeah we fall down into, uh, into P4 God knows where Piastri's got to uh, seems to have fallen behind both of the Mercedes as well as Norris and Albon have made their way up into P5 and P6 respectively and now it seems like I might be coming under a bit of pressure from those guys as well. Here comes Lando Norris making his way into P4 and uh, pushing us down to P5. Norris of course my championship rival in the past couple of seasons gone by not really proven to be too much of a championship contender here in season 6 but um, yeah I mean who knows next season he can make a big comeback once again 
Another guy who I hope to see involved in a championship fight at some point is this man, Alex Albon, who's now overtaking me as well. So much pace on the straights, even Piastri getting involved now as well. So this is where he's got to. We were battling over P2 earlier, now we're going to be battling over P6. How the, uh, the mighty have fallen. But as we make our way onto lap 10, you can see he still has yet to overtake us, but he's going for another move up the inside in the uh, the last DRS zone on the circuit. Can't quite get it done on this occasion. And through the stadium section, we are still going to be leading Oscar Piastri uh, in P6. And he's going to have to uh, going to have to hold on a little bit longer. Might be on the verge of backing up a DRS train here potentially. You can see that Gasly is uh, not too far away from the fold as well, just 1.5 seconds down. And uh, surely now with the DRS, this is going to be trivial for Oscar Piastri. There he goes, making his way up into P6. Nothing I could do about that one. We just don't have the uh, the pace to contend with uh, with the rest of the cars on the track right now. In a straight line, it's in the uh, it's in the corners that uh, our pace really uh, can be shown. Uh, moving now on to lap number 12, and you can see that I do once again have the DRS on Oscar Piastri. We bait him to the inside, and then we go for a very audacious move around the outside, go quite deep. Make sure we leave Oscar Piastri the room and leave him the room. We do indeed. And uh, yeah, up into P6 once again now. This is, of course, to win the championship, effectively. Yes, Dennis Halder is up in P3 at the moment. But like I said, I would have to fall down quite significantly. And Dennis Halder would still have to get ahead of both of those Red Bulls who are currently 1 and 2 in this race. As Piastri uh, overtakes me once again. Yeah. It will, uh, it will be only Piastri here that I think really has an opportunity to stay in the championship fight as we go off the track, exceed track limits. That's our first warning of the race. Going to have to make sure we don't get too many of those or we will be uh, we will be staring down the barrel of a penalty. Quite easy to do here as a track which very easy to run off, the, uh, run off the circuit, but hopefully we won't do that too many more times as Oscar Piastri now comes into the pit lane and uh, he will be boxing, boxing assumedly for a set of hard compound tyres, maybe for a set of mediums, not sure. Depends how optimistic he is about the chance of uh, about the chance of you know getting to the end on the medium compound tyres. I imagine some people will be doing it. Quite a few people in the pits at this point. Russell and Albon choosing to stay out, but eventually those guys will come into the pits as well. Very close to slamming into the back of Albon there. It ghosted us actually because I guess we uh, we would have collided with him after we'd already crossed the line, which is uh, of course not possible. But um, maybe it gives us an opportunity to get the jump on him if we can have a good pit stop here. Fitting those hard compound tyres, 2.2 seconds, but Alex Albon just ahead of us we uh, as we exit the pit lane. So, uh, okay, and he's on the mediums as well. So, the likely the uh, Alex Albon will be, uh, will be quite faster than us. Uh, when we make our way out of the pit lane on this next stint. And you can see that we've come out in some traffic as well. We've got Joe and DeVries for company here. I'm going to have to try and get ahead of those guys nice and quickly. The good news is, is that clearly Oscar Piastri got held up as well because he's now a couple seconds behind us. So if we can clear these guys nice and quickly and he gets stuck behind them, this could be our opportunity to keep Piastri at bay and win the, uh, the Drivers' Championship today. Um, as long as we don't fall down too far down the order as well, uh, Dennis Hauger, it's impossible for him to get back in the fight. I don't know where he currently is. I imagine if Russell took a bit longer to box, then Hauger might actually be up into P2 now. Uh, but we'll, we will see as we uh, got ahead of Joe Guan Yu there. And now we're going to try and get ahead of the Alpha Tauri of Nick DeVries on the soft compound tyres. You wouldn't imagine it's going to be too difficult. You know, he... Um, he, he obviously will be lacking quite a lot of pace anyway, just for the simple fact that he's in an Alpha Tauri. When you couple that with the soft compound tyres, he's going to be very slow through the corners. So we are going to dive up the inside of the Dutch driver and make our way into P11, which I believe is net P6. So uh, yeah, should be, uh, should be looking pretty good here at the moment to uh, grab this P6. And as we make our way onto lap number 24, you can see the gap behind is 2.4 seconds. The gap in front is 4.8 seconds. And we are in what I have often termed no man's land where uh you know you've just got no cars around you and you're literally just driving to make sure that you can keep the pace behind and uh try and close down the car in front if possible but on this occasion it doesn't seem like i'm faster than the cars in front if anything it seems like they're pulling away from me right now it's a it's a two horse race out in front between Ocon and Hauger for the race win it would be Ocon's first win in seven years if he wins here today his first since Hungary 2021 and uh, it would be Dennis Hauger's first race win since last video 
So, uh, yeah, a, uh, a lot at stake there for Esteban Ocon if he can hold on to the victory. Meanwhile, Lance Stroll in the Alpha Tauri, retiring from the race once again. Uh, just uh, not having a, a great time of things. I'm pretty sure he had a retirement in uh, in the, the USA Grand Prix as well. So, uh, yeah, that Alpha Tauri may be not particularly reliable, but uh, I would rather it be his Red Bull powertrain than mine because ultimately we do have those, uh, those Red Bull powertrain in the back of our car as well. Seem to be a lot faster for Ocon and Russell today from what I can see. Um, so that's, uh, that's curious. Meanwhile, Charles Leclerc as well, currently trying to battle his way through the field down in, uh, I think, P11 at the moment. So actually on the verge of getting into the points, which is quite good from P21 on the grid. Clearly he was on a, a good strategy and has had some good overtaking form today. We'll see if he can get himself into the points by the end of the race or not. But uh, for us, still keeping Piastri behind. The, uh, the, the margin is now just, uh, just 3.2 seconds. Um, and we've managed to maintain the gap in front to be pretty consistent. Maybe Albon's tyres will start falling away from him, but I think it might just be a little bit too little too late. Hauger as well seems to be backing off from Ocon a little bit as well, so I wouldn't be surprised if that fight is potentially over. Speaking of over, this is Teo Porcher's race coming to an abrupt end on lap 35, so close to the finish he will not be taking the checkered flag today. On the final lap you can see that Piastri has closed me down a little bit, but not so much that I think that we're in any danger really of uh, being overtaken. I don't think closing me down two seconds on the final lap is particularly feasible, no matter how fast you are, even if he has been the second best driver all season. I mean, he's not even had a race win this season, Oscar Piastri, and today certainly won't be it. Someone's come off ahead of you. There's a yellow flag ahead. And with that, another year of Formula One draws to a close and a new World Drivers' Champion is declared. Another entry added to that prestigious list of the sport's most incredible drivers. It's a performance to be proud of from our Mexico City Grand Prix winners today. Tell me, Ant. How do you think they were able to deliver such an incredible result today? Well, they certainly stood out as a drive with tons of confidence on the track. I think their ability to keep their cool, even during some of the more hectic parts of the race, meant they were able to capitalise on the mistakes of other drivers, giving them the opportunity to make their way to the top spot with ease. The drivers are en route to the podium as we speak. What a fantastic win for the Red Bull team. They've performed exceptionally today, keeping us firmly on the edge of our seats throughout the entirety of the race. Congratulations to everyone at the team. Esteban Ocon taking his first victory of the season and in that Red Bull as well. And his first victory since his historic win in the Alpine back in, uh, back in 2021. I think we uh, we all remember that day. Um, Dennis Hauger taking P2 here in the Aston Martin. And it is Ocon's teammate George Russell in the other Red Bull closing out the top three. So let's have a quick look at how the driver's standings have changed. We also crown a champion today as their lead at the top is now an insurmountable one. What a great year it's been for Formula One. So let's discuss and who would you say is a contender for your driver of the day? Let's give it to Esteban Ocon. That was a commanding performance today. Very impressive indeed. It's time to check out the constructors' standings. The owner-drivers team moved to the top of the table. Been an absolutely wild weekend of Formula One action. I can't wait to see what's next. Well, there we go. That puts a pin in the, uh, the season that we've had. And uh, we still have another four races to go. Obviously, we've still got a Constructors' Championship to wrap up. And, uh, you know, there's still races that I'm targeting getting victories at. In particular, Abu Dhabi, that's a big one. Because, as I mentioned before, I'm quite keen to try and get a victory at every circuit on the Formula 1 calendar, if I can. So, uh, yeah, don't think that this season is over by any stretch of the imagination. Because there's still uh, quite a lot left to wrap up. You know, I'm interested to see where Charles Leclerc is going to end up. Whether he can get another win this season his mentality just seems to be absolutely in the bin at the moment is the problem in terms of 
qualifying. He just doesn't seem to have that edge, which is, you know, something that we're seeing mirrored in real life at the moment as well, interestingly enough. Charles Leclerc, someone who we always describe as one of the best qualifiers in Formula 1 recently, not having the qualifying form you would expect from him, being outperformed by his teammate. And, um, yeah, it's uh, it's Carlos Sainz who's ending up being the, the better of the two in real life. And, again, in, uh, in, in, this, uh, in this canon, in my My Team career mode, Charles Leclerc being comprehensively outperformed both in the uh, in the races and in the uh, the qualifying compared to myself so uh, yeah it's uh, it's been a it's been a good season for myself we've taken eight victories so far and with Brazil still coming up I definitely think that there is the potential for us to bag a ninth victory uh, generally speaking though I'd speak to the fact that I've just had a remarkably consistent season more than anything where lots of other drivers around me have failed to do so um i've managed to, to to just constantly get myself into the top five uh i think the last time we finished outside of the top five this season uh until today where we finished p6 obviously uh the last time was uh it's Australia right when we got that P12 where we were fighting for the points all race and then we went for that audacious move right at the end and um, yeah just couldn't couldn't make it stick ended up going off the track and losing a couple positions right at the end but um, yeah I think that was the last time before today where we finished a race that we failed to finish in the top five I could be wrong about that maybe I'm forgetting something but uh, from from my memory it feels like uh, it feels like we've had a really really strong run of form through the season constantly getting wins podiums top five finishes that uh, you know just mean that we keep trundling along increasing our championship lead don't forget that it was not until it was it was about Belgium I think or France or something like that that we took the lead of the drivers championship so to suddenly go on the on the run of form that we've had and get the uh get, get the number of wins that we've had wrap up the championship just you know seven or eight races after taking the lead of the championship for the first time is really quite impressive and uh, hopefully we can wrap up the constructors next time in brazil as well but that is going to be it for this video so if you enjoyed please make sure you like and subscribe and hopefully i will see you in the next one